Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks. Welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist and all-around snappy dresser, DT, from weatherrisk.com, the captain of chaos, the colonel of confusion, the commander of, cha of catastrophe. It's a Tuesday evening, 11 p.m. It's time to talk about This Week in Weather. And lots to talk about here. We'll talk about a review of the January 7th Middle Atlantic and Southeastern New England snowstorm. We'll talk about the Omega Ridge pattern. It's going to collapse again, and here comes the torch. And then there is a strong signal for February 2017 to be cold and stormy in the eastern U.S., but the question is for how long? There are other factors at work here which some folks are ignoring and up, you know, hyping up or being more excessively positive about February in terms of the cold and the storminess than it probably should be. So we'll get into all of this. But first, let's talk about the uh, snowstorm back on uh, Saturday, January 7th. Uh, well, January 6th, 7th, depending on where you are in the deep south and the mid-Atlantic states. Now, this is the actual atmospheric pattern here, 500 millibars as of Friday evening. Now, let's point out some important features here. Um, several important features. First, uh, as you can see, Right here, we have a uh, positive North Atlantic oscillation. Here's our Omega Ridge. You can see that very nicely here. Okay. And if because of that, we have a uh, positive EPO right in this area right in here. There's a positive EPO. And the PNA is neutral. We have a little bit of ridging here, but not, not over here. So that's a neutral. And the Arctic oscillation is neutral as, as well. Now, the point here that I'm trying to make is that what happens with this system is that neither one of the jet, jet streams, the northern jet stream does not phase. Here is a northern jet stream like this, all right? And here is the southern jet stream. And the two features never phase. And the, one of the reasons they don't phase is because of the problems here. This is, the, this is what happens when you have a positive NAO and a neutral or positive Arctic oscillation. There's not enough blocking in this part of the hemisphere to cause the jet stream to phase. And as a result, the southern system never becomes a really huge system in terms of the surface low pressure, and it doesn't come off the coast. So this is the implication. This is what happens in the pattern when you don't have that. Now, here is for Saturday morning. And again, notice here, now the red X's show the uh, main piece of energy or the Vort maxes, and they are our main short wave. Here's the southern seam short wave in the purple line right here. See it? And look at the northern one is here. You see these two things are out of phase. They can't possibly merge on the east coast in time they create a big powerful system. So they're out of phase completely. And of course the northern branch is doing this, and the southern branch is doing this. And we don't we and because they don't phase, they don't merge, you don't get the big huge east coast snowstorm. And then finally, this is Saturday evening. As you can see, again, the purple line, notice the southern piece of energy right here is now off the coast, has gone negative, but the northern branch is still positively tilted and has not caught up with the system. Now, this is a very insignificant because there was an event in the past which looked just like this, and a lot of people don't know about it. This is what I, at weather risk, do, which a lot of people don't understand or fully grasp. When you study snowstorms, mid-Atlantic snowstorms, East Coast snowstorms, Midwest snowstorms like I have, you understand these patterns and you recognize events in the past. This is a system from February 27, 1963, and this is the same sort of upper air map. Now, in this feature here, we can see the um, Arctic Oscillation is strongly positive. The NAO is strongly positive. We have a bit of a ridge on the west coast, so that's different. But what happens is that the northern branch, let me call my marker here again, as you can see it coming in this way. Wrong, sorry, coming in this way. And the southern branch is down here, and the two systems do not phase. And let's take a look at the next day on the 26th. And again, notice some important features here. Again, we can see the Arctic Oscillation is very strongly positive. The NAO here, very strongly positive. And notice that the two, the, the two branches do not phase. Here is the northern one, and here is the southern one. The two are out of phase, they don't merge, and as a result, we get a significant lower middle Atlantic snowstorm, which dropped anywhere from 6 to as much as 12 inches over portions of North Carolina, eastern Tennessee, Virginia, southern Maryland, that sort of thing. 
And then finally, here's the system for the 25th of January, the beginning of it. And you can see, uh, again, the, the, the very powerful big system over southeastern Canada, a positive NAO, and then a positive Arctic Oscillation, and a big ridge on the west coast. But the two streams don't made, phase or merge. And this is why I saw this coming up. Now, I didn't post this map because I didn't want other people to see what I was doing in my line of thinking, but this is what I saw early on, which a lot of meteorologists just simply looking at the models do not understand. Now, this is the European model from, of course, uh, December 29th, and it was one of the first ones to show the snowstorm. Interestingly enough, the European model day 10 turned out to be pretty darn good. Notice that it had, um, in this area here, it did not have nearly much snow over, over Lower Hampton, uh, Southern Hampton, Northeast North Carolina, as the other models and my forecast and other people's forecast called for. It had pretty good snow in Northeast, uh, Northwest, sorry, Northwest North, North Carolina, and good snow over South Central Virginia, uh, Southwest Virginia, a little high there in the snow amounts, but a, a pretty significant snow. It also had good snow up in Pennsylvania and, 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 and Maryland and places like that, and good snow in Delaware. So that was pretty good. So overall, it was a pretty good map. It had too much snow in eastern Kentucky as well, but it wasn't bad for day 10. Okay, now as the models moved on, this was the GFS for um, uh, the 29th of December, and it showed uh, the snowfall mainly over northwest North Carolina into interior southeast Virginia, up towards Richmond, but the heaviest snow over Greensboro and Emporia, <coughs> Danville, and into Sa uh, Hampton Roads. Uh, this was the GFS valid as of, if I could take a look at the date here, uh, this was December 31st. And the GFS went to town here and showed a huge snowstorm in North Carolina, moderate snow over southwestern and central Virginia into Hampton Roads, but over 12 to 24 inches in much of North Carolina. And uh, this, uh, you know, was uh, the GFS going to town developing this enormous snowstorm. Uh, which was probably overdone, which turned out to be quite overdone, because the GFS was a signaling a phase between the two jet streams, and the other models did not. All right, now this is the Canadian model. This came out on December 31st, the Canadian model. And actually, the Canadian model did a very good job with this event the whole time it did. Look at the snow band right in this area here. You know, look at that heavy snow in southeast uh, you know, New England, Cape Cod, they got that there. Uh, the moderate snow into New York City, Philly, uh, pretty good 10 inch snows in portions of the Delmarva, 8 inches in Richmond. Uh, not as much in Hampton Roads down in here where they had more sleet, and then north of Raleigh, and then down in this whole area. So that was a really good forecast <clears throat> for seven and a half days out from the Canadian model. And it did this on a consistent basis, as we'll see. Now, this was the GFS mean from last Friday, and you can see that the Ensemble had a lot more snow than the operational run did. Very impressive. The Ensemble did a very good job here. The European did very good on January 3rd as well, also showing the same sort of decent snowstorm, mostly over uh, northern and northwest North Carolina into Hampton Roads and much of southwestern and central and eastern Virginia, and the snow stopping just short of Washington, D.C. and Baltimore. Not a bad forecast there. Now, the uh, GFS, uh, you know, as it always does, it has this ability to detect the big systems, you know, 10 days out. Then it loses them in the uh, day 9, day 7 time frame. And here we have at 102 hours out, uh, the G GFS on, Ju on January 3rd showing a flat system moving off of Orlando. Absolutely no snow in, in Virginia, northern North Carolina, Maryland, and Delaware. And a lot of the TV stations saw this and not knowing any better, they went, Duh! well, I guess it's going to miss everybody. And of course it did. The, at the same time, this is the uh, GFS model. Excuse me. This is the British model. This is the exact same time. Notice the time frame here, folks. Also January 3rd, showing right in here. So it, it you know, did the, it, it, it had the storm. And the, the UKMET did a great job. Look at that tremendous track here from this system right up through there. Very good track. So the, but a lot of forecasters don't look at the British model, and they should. It's going to hurt them on East Coast storms. Here's the Canadian model for January 3rd. Again, same sort of thing. Now, it had, sure, it had too much snow in Raleigh and Elizabeth City and in south side of Hampton Roads. But overall, this was a really good forecast map for four and a half days out. That's not bad. The Canadian did a very good job with this. Now, the GFS on January 4th, they look at it again. Took, has all the snow in Hatteras 
down towards Moorhead City, New Bern, south into Charlotte, south of Raleigh, and nothing in Virginia at all of any kind here. And a lot of folks saw this on the 4th of uh, January. I guess this is last Wednesday. And again, they said, oh, well, it's going to miss us. TV stations love doing that sort of thing. Now, you can see the change here. There's the GFS from early from the 0 run on January 5th, again showing the same sort of thing. Only a little bit of snow in Hampton Roads. All the big snows in Raleigh and over towards Greenville, Elizabeth City, Fayetteville, Jacksonville, that sort of thing in Charlotte. Then 12 hours later, the image on the right-hand side, look what it's showing here. And again, I posted this on the Facebook page. You can see the huge explosion of snow northward into central and eastern Virginia, and then also increasing the snows into Elizabeth City and Raleigh and Roanoke, uh, sorry, Roanoke Rapids, you know, Rocky Mountain, that sort of thing big shift on the GFS here. Now this is the British model and this is valid as this is from um, this is I believe this is from the uh, January uh, 5th run as well yeah January 5th and this is two days before the event and the British model did a great job here you can see the precipitation amounts now these are in millimeters but you can see the precip up in North Carolina early on this dark red is like five to seven millimeters in here and then six hours later see the greens in, in southeast Virginia uh, that's uh, 7 to 10 millimeters there, so you add that to the total, and you can see the precipitation spreading up. So the British model did a very good job with the system, no complaints here at all. And, and then finally, we began to see the shift. Uh, this is on the uh, January 5th. The European model uh, showing the snow getting just into Richmond at 10 to 1 ratio. It had a lot of snow in Hampton Roads and in northeast North Carolina and Raleigh and places like that and down towards Charlotte. And now that was more sleet, that's true. Uh, the GFS 18Z had the same sort of thing. But again, in all of these models, the thing to keep in mind here, especially north of the Virginia North Carolina border, was that the snow ratio, as you can see, is all 10 to 1 ratio in here. The snow ratio. And you can see it in here, all 10 to 1 snow ratio. So, and as a result, you know, if you have three, two to four inches of snow in Richmond, that's more that's actually more like uh, four to eight, which is fairly close to what happened. So uh you had to keep that in mind. And a lot of people did not. This is the uh, RGEM High Resolution Short Range Canadian for uh, uh, January 6th going into the 7th. And you can see, look at the Canadian model just nailing the system. This is one of the reasons I like the Canadian model for snowstorms on the East Coast a lot. 16 to 20 down here in, Hampt in uh, southeast in, uh, Massachusetts. Well, that's close. Uh, 12 inches in interior southeastern and eastern Virginia, uh, Hampton, Suffolk, uh, Williamsburg, that's correct. Not as much south side, that's good. No, uh, nothing in Elizabeth City, that turned out to be correct. Not much in Raleigh, all of it just to the north, that turned out to be correct. Nine inches in Richmond, that turned out to be correct. And then really good snows in the Delmarva in southern New Jersey. <laughs> Canadian, short range Canadian model, hard to beat it in a snowstorm, folks. And this is the next run, same sort of thing. I mean, come on, this is a, that's a pretty darn good solution for 48 hours, 36 hours out. I mean, good googly moogly. What more do you need? Okay, now these are the first guest map we saw that. I just posted it up again. You can see how I was leaning on the RGM a lot and first call map, and then I expanded it to the north and west and the last call map. Now, let's talk about the next two weeks here. Yes, it's going to get cold. Okay, again. Yes, the winter is not over, but for how long? We have had two identical Omega Ridge patterns here that have developed this winter. The models have consistently forecasted blocking patterns to develop in the jet stream and form over the Arctic and Greenland, which specifically we're talking on negative Arctic oscillation and a negative NAO. Many have forecasted long-term cold patterns lasting at least a few weeks. Some of them, I've seen some forecasts for several weeks, and that has not happened. Instead, the Arctic oscillation, the NAO, do not develop they stay positive. And as a result, the Omega cold pattern gives us 10 days of cold weather, not 20, not 30, and it breaks down. So why are the models seeing these false signals for the Arctic Oscillation go negative and the NAO? The reason is because a record QBO, positive westerly uh, QBO, which has been a record in November, December. The one in November was the strongest positive QBO on record and the same thing for December. The December value was the third strongest of all time for any month. Let's take a look at the pattern. Now, this is the uh, Europe. This is uh, from Monday. This was the European model. You can see the trough on the west coast, the ridge south, the polar vortex in central Canada, and the ridge building over the southeastern United States. Now, we do have a cold front which comes in a little bit of reinforcing cold front on Thursday and under Friday. You can see the front very nicely coming in through here. Let me highlight it so you can see it. 
right there is the big Arctic high coming in. We're getting a north wind driving the front southward. And the front does get in a little bit. You can see the high here on Saturday, uh, keeping temperatures under control over New England. And there's our sleet freezing rain line right in here. Now, the precip coming up this way, and this is all light snow, but there's not a lot of frozen precip here in Virginia or Maryland. Uh, a little bit, not much. It doesn't look like a big deal here. And again, south of the front, it's much, much warmer. And then finally, Saturday night, it looks like you are getting snow in Pennsylvania, a light to moderate snow in Pennsylvania and New York and New Jersey, all in this area here, maybe some sleet over Washington, D.C., Delaware. Uh, but again, once you go south of Interstate 66, it's all warm down in here. So the, the, front, the, the, the backdoor cold front, unless it comes much further south, is not going to get have much impact past Washington, D.C. All right, the 6 to 10 day, look what happens here. The polar vortex, remember the vortex was over south central Canada. Look where it is now, here. That places your trough here. So now you have a very, very a positive um, EPO. You have a super strong negative PNA. Okay, and the Arctic Oscillation has gone positive as well, and the NAO is uh, positive as well. So as a result, we have a huge ridge here, and everybody blow torches. Not good if you like winter weather. Look at the temperatures anomalies for January 16th, 17th. Wow, this is the surface. Look at January 20th. Wow, that's a mild pattern. And this is the European Ensemble, folks. This is 360 hours. Wow, that's a mild pattern for late January. Okay. Is there any hope at all? Well, this is the 360-hour European January 25th. Not much. We are beginning to see some changes here, but right now the pattern is showing a zonal flow, a lot of Pacific energy, a lot of Pacific air. We are beginning to see some heights develop towards Greenland, which might begin to signal a change of a pattern. Maybe, but that's a big, long way off. Now, the MJO, which right now, as you can see here, as of, Jan uh, as of January 9th, is in the neutral circle, not doing anything, just wiggling around in here. But the models show it's coming out and it's going to get active. Here is the uh, GFS, which takes the phase eight and then well, actually phase one and phase two into late January, early February. Here is the uh, European monthly model. You can see it takes into phase seven and phase eight by early February. These are cold, stormy patterns. When the MJO goes into seven and eight in February, that's a stormy pat signal for the eastern United States. And here's the Australian model doing the same sort of thing. So there are some indication that the MJO is going to turn, going to come out, get active, and make it a stormy pattern in the early February. Maybe. And the European weekly model, this is valid January 30th going into February. Big ridge on the west coast, big trough on the east coast. It looks cold, it looks stormy. And here is the one, the temperature anomalies as well, but it looks pretty nice. The problem with the pattern here, and this is the last slide, is the QBO. The, and this is how you can plot the QBO over at the, uh, you know, the e ESRL site. And you can see uh, the October, this is October 15th up top here. Uh, let me get my marker, you can see it. October 15th, this is January 7th. Now you track the QBO right along the equator. So you can see the values are plus 16. It's still increasing here, folks. This is, and the, you know, Judah Cohen made a comment about this, Dr. Judah Cohen, a couple of weeks ago, and he's quite right about this. Very strong westerly QBOs are associated with large and powerful polar vortexes that stay up over the Arctic region and they keep the Arctic Oscillation positive, the NAO positive. So these models, which are forecasting this blocking pattern to develop, you know, in February, it might not happen. And we've seen a couple of false signals for this, and you have to keep that in mind, that it might not happen. So it's going to get cold in February, but for how long, we don't know. This is the CFS for late January going into February. You can see the pattern begin to change. This is the weekly CFS here. And you can see a bigger, stormier pattern here. Now, this is for the first full week of February. This is February uh, 1st to February 7th. This is a snowstorm pattern. If the model, this is correct, and we do see this in the jet stream, there's going to be a snowstorm on the East Coast. And you can see huge blocking over Greenland, negative Arctic Oscillation, a big 50-50 low, a major piece of energy in the southern jet stream, strong supply of cold air. This is a snowstorm pattern, and it would match the phase 8 in February as well. We don't know if it's going to happen, but that's what it shows. And then we can see the pattern collapses. Sure enough, the CFS goes, <laughs> but the pattern collapses the whole thing. We develop a new mega ridge. There's no, the blocking does not hold, and we go back to another mild pattern in mid-February. 
So that's where things stand. This is meteorologist DT from weatherist.com. I'll see you on the Facebook page and on the website.